He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just like doing that. I just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Easter joy to you as we uh, gather today. Uh, we continue to journey through this Easter season, so it is filled with joy as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we gather today, we do gather for the refreshment uh, that Jesus gives to us, and uh, we find that refreshment through His Word today. Uh, he actually uses those words today that we find refreshment in the presence of our Lord, and so may that be a blessing to us. We also receive refreshment in the Lord's Supper today. Again, our risen Lord gives us His body and blood and so we receive that refreshment in those ways as we gather as his people today. Uh, with that, let us uh, use our uh, setting three. We'll use that as our worship service this morning. We'll find that in our hymnal. And so with that, may the Lord bless us as we gather as his people today. So with that, let us join our voices together as we sing our opening hymn, which is number 478, The Day of Resurrection. May the Lord bless us today. Resurrection, earth shall lit out abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God. From death to life eternal, from sin's dominion free. Our Christ has brought us over with hymns of victory. Let hearts be purged of evil, that we may see upright the Lord in rays eternal of resurrection light. And listening to his accents, may hear so calm and plain. His own all hail and hearing may raise the victor strain. Now let the heavens be joyful, let earth its song begin. Let all the world keep triumph, and all that is therein. Let all things seen and unseen their notes of gladness blend. For Christ the Lord has risen, our joy that has no end. Please stand. All praise to God the Father, all praise to God the Son, all praise to God the Spirit, eternal three in one. Let all the ransom number fall down before the throne, and honor, power, and glory ascribe to God alone. As we gather this day, we do gather in the name of our triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. We spend a moment in silence to reflect on God's word. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, 
confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in this stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee. We glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that taketh away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings. Our first reading today is from Acts 3, verses 11 through 21. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. 
And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of God, or Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> See what our epistle comes from 1 John chapter 3, 1 through 7. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Praise be to thee, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me and the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Thee, O Christ. Our service continues as we speak the words of our Christian faith found in the wording of the Nicene Creed. We confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and came salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. 
And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. This time the children are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning. How's everyone? Doing well? Good. Thanks for coming up today. Today I wanted us to talk about names. I wanted us to talk about names today. Do any of you here have the same name? Looking around here. Anybody have the same name? Let's see. Do, 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 do. I don't think anyone has the same first name, right? Am I right in saying that? No. None of us have the, f- have the first, um, first name that's the same. Yeah. So who gave you your name? Parents did, right? Yeah. Do you remember when they gave you your name? <laughs> yeah, when you were a baby, right. So maybe you don't ex- actually remember the time, but right. When we were a baby, uh, they named us, gave us our name, and that is our name. Um, wonderful gift, our name, as we think about that. It uh, gives us an identity. It uh, tells other people who we are. They call us by name. A wonderful gift as we think about names. Let me ask you the question again, though. Any of you here have the same name? The same last name? There we go. All right. Yeah. You do, right. So you guys have the same last name. 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 I'm sorry, Sadie. (laughs) <laughs> but I was going to also say, so maybe if you have a sibling that's not here, yeah, you have someone else who has the same last name. Your parents, too, right? Share the same last name. And so that's our family, family name. You can talk about that's our family name. Then in ways we share the same name. Wonderful gift again as we think about the name uh, that God gives to us. And in that way, our family name as well. And as we think about our brothers and sisters that we may have in that name. You may, maybe haven't thought about it this way before, but you have a lot more brothers and sisters than what you maybe realize. Maybe you might think, well, I have one brother or one sister or, or two or three or whatever. You might think that you can count them up on one hand, but actually, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Anyone who believes in Jesus, who has been baptized in Jesus, is a child of God. And so in that way, as we are baptized into Jesus, as we believe in Jesus, as Jesus forgives us, gives us faith, we are children of God. We're children of God's family. And so we have a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ. He like said we're all brothers and sisters in Christ as we are baptized into him, as we believe in Jesus. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Our second reading for today kind of touches on this. Second reading, first verse says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. Again, Jesus makes us God's children, uh, makes us part of God's family. And so we have a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ. So last thing I want to share with you this morning, when you were baptized, and you guys mentioned that you maybe didn't remember when you were named, right? You don't remember when you received your first name. You probably don't remember if you're baptized as a baby when God put his name on you as well. So when you're baptized, you're baptized in the name of the Father. The sign of the cross is put on your your forehead, put on your heart to mark you. As one redeemed by Jesus, God puts his name on you in baptism. And so again, as he puts his name on you, you become a, a member of his family. You take on the Christian family name what do you think that means for us as we live as christians do we do we live in a certain way 
Now, as Christians, do we have uh, guidelines to, to live by? Uh, do we have um, brothers and sisters in Christ to love and to serve? I hope you're going to say yes. Yeah, because that's the way it goes. Just like at home, you're part of a family, and you live by certain things, do certain things. Same thing for us as God's children. We're part of the family, and God calls us to love each other, to receive his gifts together, to worship him, like we're doing here this morning. All those things remind us that we are a part of God's family. We have God's family name. All right? So I'm just kind of pointing to the baptismal font this morning for our uh, object lesson here that reminds us of all that. So with that, let's have a word of prayer as we close. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for making me a child of God. Help me love others in your name. Amen. All right. Thanks for coming up this morning. Our service continues with our sermon hymn number 483. With high delight, let us unite. delight let us unite in songs of great jubilation ye pure in heart all bear your part sing jesus christ our salvation to set us free forever he is risen and sends to all earth's ends good news to save every nation. True God, he first from death has burst forth into life all subduing. His enemy doth vanquish lie, his death has been death's undoing. And yours shall be like victory, or death and grace, saith he who gave his life for us, life renewing. Give thanks and bring to Christ our Lord adoration. His honor speed by word and deed to every land, every nation. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for this morning's message is our first reading that comes to us from Acts chapter 3, verses 11 through 21. We listen again to the words of verses 19 and 20 that say, Repent therefore and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of of the Lord. This is God's word that blesses us this Sunday morning. While the current temperatures may not suggest it, the calendar reveals it, higher temperatures are on the way. Soon temperatures will rise and summer will be upon us. And when summertime does come upon us, we will once again find ourselves in the heat. Whether it be working outside in our garden, working in our flower beds around the house, doing work outside in general, or just spending time outside. 
As summer comes upon us, we will find ourselves in the heat. But as we anticipate finding ourselves in the summer heat, we will once again look for times of refreshment. Times of refreshment such as drinking a cool glass of water, maybe even two or three cool glasses of water, like applying aloe vera on our sunburn after we spend too much time in the sun or forget to put on sunscreen, or like simply getting out of the heat, seeking refuge in air conditioning. As we anticipate the summer heat coming upon us, we will once again seek times of refreshment. As we think about our first reading today, it also talks about seeking times of refreshment. But as we think about today's text, it's not talking about seeking refreshment from the summer heat. No, instead it's talking about seeking refreshment from wrong decisions. Is talking about seeking refreshment from sinful choices. In our first reading for today, it talks about a crowd who had participated in putting Jesus to death. They were part of the crowd that yelled of Jesus, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! In doing so, they had put God to death. In doing so, they had killed the Creator who had created them. But now, now Jesus was alive. The one they had put to death had risen from the dead. The one they had seen as their enemy and adversary was back. And in movie terms, this would be a perfect plot for revenge. Where would the crowd go from here? To what would the crowd turn? And just to make sure that the crowd understood their situation that they were in, Peter speaks this indictment in today's reading. But you deny the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be granted to you. And you kill the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this... We are witnesses. Wow, we might say. Talk about a guilty verdict. Wow, we might say. Talk about being thrown in the pressure cooker and turning up the heat. Wow, we might say, what a need they had for refreshment. As we go through life, we have a need for refreshment too. Do we ever have a need for refreshment, right? For as we go through life, we are constantly bombarded by this, that, and the other thing all the time, continually, 24-7. As an example, mass shootings have become commonplace in our country today. Did you know that the U.S. has had 45 mass shootings just within the last month? That's right. 45 mass shootings have occurred within the last 30 days. As we go through this life, it is filled with riots and property destruction based on the platform of racism. Along with that, there's a continual call for police reform. As we go through life, of course, we continue with this whole COVID thing. This COVID thing that's been all over the place. One time we were told, do this, don't do that. And then we're told, don't do this, do that. As we think about social media today, we might say it's a cesspool of constant shaming others, all in an attempt to improve one's self-worth. As we find ourselves in our culture today, it is being called a cancel culture that seeks to do away with anything that causes an inconvenience. As we go through life, we are constantly pressured to conform 
to unbiblical ideals. And so due to these things, we get tired. We find ourselves needing refreshment. Do we ever need refreshment? But the problem is, oftentimes we turn to the wrong things. And that is to say, we often turn to the things of this life. Oftentimes, we end up placing our faith then in gun control. We oftentimes place our faith in social reform. We oftentimes place our faith in vaccines. Or maybe we place our faith in ourselves. And that is to say we seclude ourselves, we isolate ourselves from life, and we seek refreshment within. Refreshment that we try to manufacture. But the problem of it is, we cannot, we do not, find true, lasting refreshment within ourselves. We do not, we cannot, find true, lasting refreshment outside of ourselves either. Because we live in a broken body. We live in a broken world. So true, lasting refreshment cannot be found within a broken world. In this way, we need help from the outside. But the temptation for us here today is to be like the crowd in today's text. That is to deny our Lord Jesus, to deny the righteous and holy one, to look for something else to be given to us, to deny the author of life. And in so doing, we sin. We may not have shouted, crucify Him, crucify Him. But it is our sin that puts Jesus on the cross. It is for our sin that He hangs there and He dies there. It is for our sin that the author of life dies. And so in this way, we need refreshment. Lord, do we ever need refreshment. And so where do we turn? Where do we turn in our dilemma? Where do we turn in our life? Where do we turn in our scenario that is really ripe for judgment and revenge? Our text for today says, Repent therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Why does our text say this to us today? Because our Lord Jesus says with us in mind the words of Luke 23, verse 43, that say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. In this way, Jesus is the one who can give us refreshment. He is the one who can give us refreshment because He found no refreshment on the cross. On the cross, Jesus said, I thirst. And Jesus said, I thirst more, not just because of he was dehydrated. Jesus said, I thirst, not just because of the loss of blood. Jesus said, I thirst, because he was there suffering the punishment of our sins. Jesus said, I thirst, because he experienced the separation of his Father. Jesus said, I thirst because He experienced hell on our behalf. While on the cross, Jesus was denied any sort of refreshment for us, for you and me, so that we might have refreshment in Him. And so our risen Lord says to you today, in the words of Matthew eleven twenty-eight, Come to Me. All who labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here, you can hear Jesus saying to you, Come to me for the refreshment that you need. Come to me for the refreshment that you desire. Come to me for the refreshment you thirst for. From the words of today's text, Jesus is the one who has been appointed for you. Jesus is the one who has been sent for you. Jesus is your Savior who has come to give you the refreshment you need. Forgiveness, salvation, and life. So today, drink deeply of this gospel message. Let it refresh your soul. Let it blot out your guilty conscience. Let it renew your inner being. Let your God-given faith that is grounded in your risen Lord and Savior give you healing according to His good plan and purpose. And later on, when you walk out the church doors later this morning, go out and live. Live in the refreshment that Jesus gives to you. Live in the refreshment that gives you life in Him. Live in Him and share this gift, the gift of Jesus, the gift of refreshment. Share it with others too. We have an example of sharing Jesus and the refreshment that Jesus gives before our text for today. Before our text for today, a lame man comes up to Peter and John. A lame man who had been lame from birth. This man comes up to Peter and John and he asks them for alms. That is, asks them for some money or material things to support his body and life. But it's interesting to note what Peter gives this man. Peter says to this man in Acts 3, verse 6, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The very next verse says, And he, Peter, took him by the hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. This is to say that Peter gave this man Jesus. Peter gave this man Jesus in the refreshment that Jesus brings. What does this mean for us today? It means that we are to give others Jesus too. We are to give Jesus to others and let Jesus do His will and His work in their lives. As the church reminds me, of what we do with our PIN fund, that is our person in need fund. When people come to us seeking financial assistance, we do our best to help them out in their time of need. But in doing so, I usually say something to the following effect. We are glad to help you in your time of financial need, but we have something much better to share with you as well. The money that we give you today is here today, but it'll be gone tomorrow. But we would love to share Jesus with you and the gifts that He gives that last forever. What does this mean to us as individuals? I think we naturally think of helping others when it comes to their financial need, helping them out in that way. Maybe we think of helping others when it comes to giving them good, good advice on whatever it might be. And we seek to help others by being there for them in their time of need. To be there in their presence. All these things are good things. But the best thing we can do for others is to give them Jesus. For Jesus is the one, the only one who can give true, long-lasting refreshment. Refreshment. That takes away sin. Refreshment that gives comfort, assurance, and peace. 
Refreshment that gives provisions and promises. Refreshment that heals. Refreshment that gives hope in the midst of death. Refreshment that gives purpose and meaning to life. Refreshment that gives life itself. Both for this life and the life to come. And so today, let us go forth in that refreshment. The refreshment that Jesus gives to us. You need it, I need it, and Jesus gives it. Let us go forward in the refreshment that Jesus gives to us. Let us go forward and share that refreshment too. Because the world around us needs it, and you and I have it to share. Jesus is the one that gives times of refreshing that comes from the Lord. In Jesus' name, who is our source of refreshment. Amen. Now may the peace of God that does pass all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our service this morning continues as we sing the offertory. This begins on the bottom of page 192. Please stand. Create in me clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. And with today's offering in mind, we sing stanza one of hymn number 781. give thee but thine own, whatever the gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone, a gift, O Lord, from thee. In our prayers for this morning, we include the people who are listed in our bulletin. Uh, new prayer petitions this morning. Uh, this morning we do pray for the family of Leona Weiss. Uh, Leona did pass away this past week, for, so we pray for her family during this time to give them comfort and peace uh, found in the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Uh, we also pray this morning uh, for Jerome Eckler, who is anticipating knee surgery tomorrow on Monday. And so we pray for Jerome this morning, praying God's blessings upon him and the surgeons also. Uh, that that surgery is successful. So in that way, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, because you have sent us your Son, times of refreshing do come from you. In the midst of this world's sins and sorrows, continue to refresh us through the forgiveness of sins that your word promises us, that the words of absolution proclaim to us, that the waters of our baptism cover us with and through the body and blood that our Lord's Supper gives us. Refresh us, Lord, as we journey through this barren land of this life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the incarnation of your Son and the reconciliation of this cross, you have made us your children and gathered us into your holy church. 
Continue to send your spirit among us so that we might gather together as your people, living life together in you. Gather us for worship, Bible study, and Sunday school. Gather us together so that we might encourage one another and be encouraged by one another. Gather us together so that we might serve each other and be served by one another. Gather us together so that our life together might give glory and honor to you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, preserve our nation and and guide, mold, and direct all our leaders at all levels. Produce repentance where repentance is needed, humbleness and servitude where they are lacking, boldness and courage to do what is right, be with us as citizens of our land so that we are responsible and law-abiding. Call the hearts of the people of this land back to you so that they might be filled with love, forgiveness, reconciliation, contentment, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. And gracious Father, as your son's wounds brought gladness and peace to the troubled disciples, give your presence and comfort to those troubled in our midst. Today we pray your blessings upon Claire and Doug, Bev and Bob, Danny and Jerome. Bless them with your presence, strong faith in your promises, in healing and wellness according to your gracious will. Comfort also those who weep among us, especially the family of Leona Weiss. Be with them, give them comfort and joy, peace that is found in the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Shine your light of mercy, peace, and power on your people, especially today, Chevy Hansen, Jeff and Angie Hansen, Cantrell, Cammie, and Devin Harrison. Bless their lives with your love and presence and enable them to glorify your name and be a blessing to others. Lord, in your mercy. And Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by your Son's crucifixion, all sins have been blotted out. Fill us with repentant faith that receives the body and blood of Jesus today, that we might receive the blessings of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our service continues on page 194. The Lord be with you. Thy Spirit lift up your hearts. Lift up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially, we are bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. By his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Oh, holy, oh, holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. More mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 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 We sing our closing hymn number 920. Forth in the peace of Christ we go. of Christ we go, Christ to the world with joy we bring, Christ in our minds, Christ on our lips, Christ in our hearts, the world's true King. King of our hearts, Christ makes us kings. Kingship with Him, His servants gain. With Christ the servant, Lord of all. Christ's world we serve to share Christ's reign. Priest of the world, Christ sends us forth this world of time to consecrate this world of sin by grace to heal Christ's world in Christ to recreate. Christ, our heart lips, His word we speak. Prophets are we whose deeds proclaim Christ's truth in love that we may be. Christ in the world to spread Christ's name. We 
We are the church Christ bids us show that in his church all nations find their hearth and home where Christ restores true peace, true love to all mankind. Please be seated. As we conclude our uh, service this morning, um, you'll notice that there are a lot of announcements in the bulletin again. Uh, I'm not going to cover all of them, but just to highlight a few uh, that is maybe important for us to be, be thinking about. Um, first of all, we do have a potluck after Sunday school today, and that will be followed by our voters meeting. Uh, so please join us for Sunday school today, our potluck today, our voters meeting today as well. Uh, so a number of things... Uh, as we go forward in that way. We have a few items on the agenda that we um, talked about last time. 